today I'm going to share some keys that I've learned to come out freer, stronger, smarter and blessed. So I've called today's message, Something Good is About to Happen. Today, let's take a look at a mighty fire in the Bible. In the book of Daniel, in chapter 3, we find a story about King of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar. He was one of the most, well, I think, evil kings, surrounded Jerusalem, grabbed in, uh, their, some of their most influential people. It's what evil kings did to grow their own empires. And among the captives were three Jewish boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So King Nebuchadnezzar built a gold statue 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide. Well, when I googled that, it's about five times the height of this building, and it's about twice the height of Rachel wide. So she tells me she's under five foot. I was trying to find somebody short. Thank you for being my example. Woohoo! So he set it up on the plain of Jura in Babylon, basically in a place where it could clearly be seen for miles and miles around. And then he said, whoever does not fall down and worship the statue will be thrown into the fiery furnace. furnace. Oh, yay. So out of fear, most people did, but not these three young boys. Then some narcs came along, some astrologers, and said, Daniel 3.12, but there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you've put in charge of the province of Babylon. They pay no attention to you, your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods and do not worship the gold statue you have set up. Verse 19, Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Now, I'm not sure how hot that is. I guess my sense of heat appreciation is bonfires on the beach. But I did see photos of fires in Australia and uh, California last year. They were pretty fierce. In fact, some of the firefighters lost their lives. In Daniel 3.20, And he commanded the strongest men in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. These three men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics or undergarments, their turbans and their other clothing, and they were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame and sparks from the fire killed those men who handled Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, I'm going to get tired of saying those tongue twisters, fell down bound into the burning, fiery furnace. So, Father God, as we begin 2021, Father, I pray for anyone who is going through any type of fire today or in the future. Father, your peace will rule in their hearts and minds that everyone will leave here today with the knowledge, some understanding and some implementation keys that will help them to come through their fire triumphant, stronger and blessed. In Jesus' name. So the first thing I want to prophesy over you is wherever you are today, whatever is going on, something good is about to happen. By the law of averages, I know pretty much here everyone has been through some kind of fire in their life. You're either going through it or there's something coming up in the future. I have, Mitch has, and I've got friends here today who are going through some traumatic things. Mine will be different to yours, but probably with the same heat and intensity. Here's a few. At two, my mother left home, never came back. I was bullied through primary and intermediate school. What's that, four and eight? Four years, four and eight now. I experienced a stillbirth at 38 weeks. I lost a husband at age 40. I raised three teenagers on my own for about three, five years. I've experienced extremely difficult, overwhelming financial debt. I've been publicly slandered by business colleagues. I've been falsely accused and abandoned by close Christian friends. And more recently, Christmas and New Year, I lost both my parents. So I want to share some keys that I've learned from Daniel 3 about going through the fire. The first one is praise God. And thank you this morning, guys. Those songs were really good. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I know it's going to sound absolutely crazy when you're going through a fire, but what you ought to be doing is praising God that you made it to the fire. From our story, we see there are others who did not make it to the fire. 
they died at the door. In Daniel 3.20, King Nebuchadnezzar's men, the most mighty men, his strongest soldiers, died as they threw in the three Jewish boys. Well, actually, there's some kind of justice. Anyway, they only came closer to the fire. Someone needs to know it's a miracle that you made it here, that you are here today. You made it to the fire. Hi, Letitia. I saw you over there. She's from my work. The king's mighty men, those three soldiers, could represent the three greatest athletes, maybe, the three most popular in school, the three top-scoring academics. Those that had everything going for them and should have made it. If anybody should have made it, they should have, but they didn't. They died at the door. On the other hand, you are still here. Tell the person next to you, thank God I made it here. I forgot to tell you this was going to be slightly interactive. Sorry, my uh, thing just decided on my phone. I thought this was the easiest way to do this. Uh, just decided to... It's all right, I've got it. No, I'm not panicking, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sorry, hang on. Finding it again. Okay. It's always fun. Got there. Okay. So, moving on. So maybe there are things, or actually I should say first, life and death is in the power of the tongue. What we say is what comes into our life, right? So maybe there are things in your life that you shouldn't have lived through. My daughter could have died at, um, at 38 weeks. She was induced because she followed my stillbirth. I praise God she didn't. Mitch could have died of a drug overdose. I praise God he didn't. When I didn't even know him, my God was watching over me. When my mother left at two years old, I ended up living with my grandmother, an amazing, godly Christian woman. Her love and influence actually helped shape and create who I am today. Sadly, she died when I was 11. But God had his hand on me. God had his hand on Mitch, and God has his hand on every single one of you. I certainly was not the strongest. I was not the smartest at school, and I was certainly not the most popular. I wasn't the one most expected to make it. In fact, I came from a broken home and in a primary school meeting once, it was declared over me I would be a failure. I made it. I even got a business degree. And there's no other explanation but God. I thank God I made it to the fire. God just wants to remind somebody today, you're going to be okay. Deuteronomy 31.16 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He was with you before you even got to the fire. And as a matter of fact, if you're in the middle of a fiery furnace now, there is proof you are coming out. Your miracle started at the door. So push your neighbour and say, now I know I'm coming out. Today, if you're in the middle of a fire and feeling the heat, Please know, I didn't come here to tell you that it's not real or that it doesn't hurt. I've been there, big or little, it hurts. And I'm really sorry that you're going through it. Some of you might be going through the greatest fires of your life. It might be financial, sickness, abuse, divorce, relationship issues, rebellious children, loss of a spouse, a child, a parent or a loved one. And I'm here to tell you something good is about to happen. And that does often sound like insanity because there's often no visible or tangible evidence or physical evidence that there is anything good in the fire. Which brings me to my next point. Be expectant. Romans 8, 18 says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. God's doing a good thing in you. Start looking for it. And Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things... God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. When God is involved, you are going to make it. You are not coming crawling out on your hands and knees, all beat up, with your eyebrows singed and smelling of smoke. Nope. You're coming out with some joy and some peace and a greater anointing than you have ever had before. So because of the Christian influence of my grandmother, Jesus actually became my friend and strength through my life. If my mother hadn't have left, I may never have had that influence in my life through those formulative years. It changed my life. 
on a daily basis. And God teaches us things through the fires, as hard as they are. Being bullied through primary and intermediate school taught me to uh, recognise discernment with people. Losing a husband at age 40, I discovered what's really important. My God, my kids, my family. I found time to actually step back and find who Shirley really was. I started working on and developing my God-given talents and ministries. Yay, I have some. Preparing me to become uh, the perfect wife for Mitch. But hang on, I'm jumping ahead. I'm not there yet. <laughs> Dan 3.20 uh, says, The king chose some of his strongest men. Seriously? His best, his strongest, his meanest, highly trained soldiers. Wow. Why? My next point is, do not underestimate the power of Jesus in you. There have been times when I've thought, and maybe you have, I just don't understand. It feels like I'm fighting on a different level. It's like um, the enemy is stronger, bigger, hairier, smarter even than ever before. Well, that ought to tell you something. The fact that he's bringing out his big dogs tells me you've got to be a big threat to him. You're getting close to your destiny and walking into the plans and purpose that God has for your life. And he's trying to intimidate you and make you back down. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I notice in the story then, they tied them and bound them. We know there's good and evil out there, eh? So there's an enemy that does not want the children of God walking and living in the freedom of God, at joy, at peace, worshipping and praising God like we did this morning without fear and reservation. So he uses the things in our lives to try to push us down, to shut us up, to back us up, tangled up in fear and anxiety, worry and grief. When I had my stillbirth, I have to say, I struggled to pray or even praise God. Thoughts came to me. I must be a bad person. God's rejecting me. It's overwhelming negativity. I can tell you, honestly, I went into a really dark place because of those lies. I had to remind myself, my, my God had good plans for me, not to destroy me. Chuck Swindle writes, nothing touches me that has not passed through the hands of my heavenly Father. Nothing. Whatever occurs, God has surveyed and approved. Romans 8.35 tells me much the same thing to 37. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean to be he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scripture says, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Through the power of God, apparently, I would come through this and well. I learnt there and then the fastest way up was praising him for who he was and what I had. A healthy son, a wonderful husband, beautiful home, and three beautiful kids. I started declaring God's word over me out loud until it became part of my natural thoughts. Through this trauma, my first husband heard God's audible voice. It was his first realisation. God was real. Praise God. Don't believe the lie that the devil has greater power. He doesn't. There was power in the word of God through the mighty name of Jesus and through his spirit who can work through each one of us. I learned in the middle of the fire how to fight. However, when we start to fight, sometimes things get worse before they get better. My next point, be ready for the heat to get hotter. He cast them into the fiery furnace seven times greater hotter, more intense, and more painful. When you're fighting something new, it seems like the attack is more severe, the pain is deeper, and those night times seem darker. Let, you remind, let me remind you again, something good is about to happen, but um, not yet because they fell down. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell down, bound in the midst of the fiery furnace. They were down, but they were not out. So... Who of you would be honest enough to admit that through this Christian walk, uh, you've fallen down once or twice, you've been blindsided, knocked over, kicked down, and you're sitting there lying with your, the wind knocked out of you saying, what just happened? Those three Hebrew boys found themselves lying on the ground, bound in the middle of the fire. 
I'm so glad the story doesn't end there. Because it says that wicked king looked into the furnace and he was amazed, he was astonished because he expected to see those boys turning into crispy bacon. But instead, we read verse 25. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound walking around in the fire unharmed and the fourth looks like a god. Which brings me to my next point. Keep your friends close and Jesus closest, before and through the fires. Romans 8, 26 tells me, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, that same power available to, is available to us right now in our humanity that was available to Jesus in his humanity when he was walking here on earth. And wow, guess what? They got back up again. In the fire, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were walking closely with Jesus. He turned up in the middle of their fire, he turned up in the middle of mine, and he will turn up in the middle of yours. And notice those three boys went through the whole thing together. Make sure you have your Christian friends around you to stand by you and pray with you. God actually sent me a night watchman once who slept outside my bedroom door to pray for me and to know when I got up. I discovered that my God in the middle of the fires can lift me up, can liberate me in my darkest times. That same God that can shut the lion's mouth so he can't take a bite, breathe through his nose and create a super highway through the Red Sea. We sang that this morning. That same God will show up in the middle of your fire and he will show you who's boss. And remember that same that fire was intended to burn up those Hebrew boys burnt up the ones who threw them in. We once had a business friend, we thought, slander us in a small town. It was really nasty. We got our lawyers involved. We didn't quite know what to do. Unbeknown to us, one of our best clients uh, went and checked on us, testified in a meeting and vindicated us. Praise God for that. The other guy, hmm, didn't have such a good reputation in the end. God said to tell someone here today, don't worry about those liars, those enemies that are slandering you or come against you. God's going to sort it. You're not going to have to do a thing, say a thing, or lift a hand. Next point, the fire liberated them. The fire burnt off the things that had them bound. You know, there are some, some things in our lives that it takes the fire to take away, to burn off. Truth is, there's even stuff that we don't want to let go, and it takes the fire to get it out of us. Things like pride, anger, self-righteousness, rejection, self-pity, lust, envy, hate, fear, addictions, and other stuff. I know we don't like to talk about it, but God has a refiner's fire for us. You know, when they heat precious metal, the dross, the dirt, the rubbish comes to the top. They skim it off to refine the end product. After my stillbirth, I went and saw prayer warriors. And together we broke off and prayed off some things that had become very deeply rooted inside of me, some things I needed to let go of and stay free of. 1 Peter 1, 6-7 says, May the thought of this cause you to jump for joy, even though lately you've had to put up with the grief of, my, of many trials. But these only reveal the sterling, sterling core of your faith, which is far more valuable than gold that perishes. For even gold is refined by fire. Your authentic faith will result in even more praise and glory and honour when Jesus the Anointed One is revealed. So God wants to turn around the very thing that was going to destroy you and to move you forward into his destiny, his plans for your future. That ministry time seriously taught me how to be free, to stay free, free and to praise God through it all. So when you're in the fire, what I've learned, it's not punishment, it's preparation. God never said he wouldn't, we wouldn't have to go through stuff. Remember Isaiah 42 said, you will not drown, you will not be burnt up, the flames will not consume you. You know, kindling's what you make to catch a fire when we used to make bonfires on the beach. And although we, it catches the fire, God has said, it wouldn't take hold of us. It wouldn't catch me or consume me. I've felt those flames, believe me, reaching for me, trying to consume me. I've learnt rejection can't take hold of me. Poverty can't take hold of me. Overwhelming grief, depression can't take hold of me. Fear and anxiety can't take hold of me. Oh, I feel it, and that's normal, and it's healthy. But it doesn't have to consume me. 
Addictions, alcohol, drugs don't have to take hold of you. You can be free. Ask Mitch. He's been through it. And verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. And verse 27, not a hair on their heads was singed, and their clothing was not scorched. They didn't even smell of smoke. The king had to call them out of the fire. When did they come out? When they were up loose and walking around. You might be asking God, so when am I coming out of this fire? Let me tell you, when it doesn't matter anymore. When you've learned to dance in the fire, when you can praise him and you don't feel like it, when you can allow God to burn off the chains that are binding you and holding you, letting go of the things that you don't want to let go, and look what happened. My seventh point. They were promoted. Verse 30 says, Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to even higher positions in the province of Babylon. But wait, first, King Nebuchadnezzar actually praised God and told his empire to praise the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So through their witness and testimony, and God turned up. What a testimony. Those three boys were promoted by the fire. I believe God's getting you ready to where you have never gone before to do what you have never done before. And as I start to close, know this, the shortcut is through the fire. You can take the long way round or you can go directly through. Let me remind you, something good is about to happen. After my first husband died, I'm good. (laughs) I had a couple of uh, quick work promotions and quick succession. I was promoted into senior leadership teams in my church. I sold property, downsized, released some debt. I travelled abroad, spending time with my kids. I had time to plan and pray about my future. And five years later, (laughs) through a you've got mail type romantic adventure, God gave me the opportunity to meet and marry Mitch. (laughs) an amazing man of God, and that mother who left us through an amazing set of events, full restoration happened. It was 27 years later. But God sent me to find her and fill in the missing puzzle pieces. Later, she became a Christian, and God showed her that she should never have left us. And she asked, how can you ever forgive me? I said I already had. I recently had the privilege of praying for her on her bedside on Christmas Day. Sadly, she died on Christmas Day. On the same day that my mother's body was buried deep in the earth, laid to rest, the surgeons reached deep into my daughter's womb and brought new life into this world in the shape of a beautiful granddaughter. Where there is sorrow and sadness, God can bring joy. I've learned to look for the God moments to look for the rainbows, the signs of hope through it all. On New Year's Eve, my dad passed away. Only a few months before, God had given us a lucid moment in his dementia. And with tears streaming down his cheeks, he asked Jesus into his life, and Mitch had the privilege of leading him through that prayer. I found a special letter written by his grandmother to his parents, or to my grandfather, sharing her love of Christ and encouraging them to get to know her also. I hadn't known that. When I was putting this message together last year, I had no idea I was going to go through such an intense fire right before sharing this. And God knew, but he wants you to know that this is real. This is not just a good story. This is our reality when we walk with God. Everything I've just shared, I've gone through again. I felt the pain of those losses. And I was so grateful for the joy of a new granddaughter, the videos and photos that came from Melbourne. I chose not to be dragged down into the depths of grief again. And I prayed, God, I need to grieve because that's healthy, but I don't want to go into a place that's not of you. I chose to praise God for my granddaughter, for my friends and family who messaged and called me and sent me flowers. Thank you. I went out of Mitch's new boat and gave God glory for the beautiful place that we live in. 
and the peace and tranquility of just sitting on the water with Mitch and with my God. I went for walks in the bush in the peace and tranquility. You know, when Jesus made the disciples get in the boat and go across to the other side without him, did he know there was a storm coming? Yes. Why did he send them? Because to learn and grow and stretch their faith. They were terrified. Jesus met them in the middle of a storm and Peter ended up growing his faith by walking on water. Whatever you're going through, I want you to know I am living testimony and I can honestly say Jesus will be there in the middle with you. There is always hope, there is always joy, and there is always peace. I want to end by saying, if you don't know this God that I know, we invite you to come up from prayer once we close the service. We would love to introduce you to him. If you feel um, the desire maybe to commit to a deeper level, we'd love to pray for you for that as well. If you're going through a fire, we really want to pray for you as well. So thank you for listening. Wow. <laughs> oh, you might have got a little bit more than you bargained for when you came to church on Sunday. Thank you so much, Shirley, uh, for not just being able to communicate something clearly from the Bible, but sharing something from your heart. You know, we can, uh, we can see so clearly the impact that, that, uh, that God has had in your world to be able to walk that out. So well done. Hey, uh, kids are just coming in. That's cool. Just come and uh, find your parents, kids, if you uh, if you need to. And in fact, um, as Shirley mentioned, it, you know, like if you if you recognise that you really are walking through the fire, some sort of fire at the moment, we really would love to stand with you and just pray for you. Um, so just feel free to come uh, up the front just after we close in a moment. Uh, and if we could just have some of our team, some of the leaders and so forth, just come and stand with others and pray with them. That would be, that would be really good. I was, just, I was just struck by one little phrase uh, that Shirley um, uh, read to us in the, from the story. When it said, they didn't even smell of smoke. I was thinking about that from two angles. One being the promise that it is. You know, if you recognize that you're walking through something at the moment, the promise of being able to come out the other side, not even smelling of smoke, you know, just full restoration, full, uh, just, you know, God, just by His Holy Spirit, being able to come and restore you uh, fully within your heart to what you're walking through. But also the other angle of it, sometimes we walk, we look around church life and we, we just don't think anybody else is going through stuff, you know, because they walk through it and they don't smell of smoke. And so you don't necessarily recognize what they've actually walked through. But you are surrounded by people who have walked through tough stuff. Uh, you know, we all do from time to time. And just because we're involved in a church, we have God in our lives, doesn't change that. Uh, and so we just have a different way of being able to approach life uh, because of it. So I'd love to pray for you, for us all. Uh, and, and then, like I say, if you'd love someone to stand with you, just come forward and we'll pray for you. Um, hey, just on a practical note, it is raining outside. <laughs> oh. um, if you've been in the loop, you would have known that we were about to do a picnic um, down at Odua Beach. Uh, so we won't do that. Um, I mean, you're welcome to go down and celebrate in the rain if you want to. Um, but what we'll do instead is we'll postpone it till next Sunday. Uh, so please pray for some sunshine next week. And if you're here, then we'd love to uh, go and do that together. Come on, why would you uh, stand to your feet? Let me pray for you one more time, and then, uh, then we'll go and have a great day. In fact, if you just recognize there's, uh, there's something that you're walking through at the moment, why don't you just, as just, it, some sort of uh, symbol or recognition in your own heart, why don't you just open up a hand or just put your hand on your heart or something like that just to say God I just I recognize that I'm walking through something at the moment and if you're if you're not in the middle of something why don't you think of someone who you know is and be praying for them just as we pray together Father we thank you for your grace God we thank you for what Shirley has uh, led us through communicated spoken to us about this morning Lord we thank you for the promise of you being with us and God whether it be a fire that we recognize that we ourselves are walking through or we know someone who is. God, we pray for that promise of your presence with us and with them in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the tough stuff, Lord God. Thank you that your hand is not too short to be able to reach into those moments 
and minister and bring your heart of compassion and love and strength and grace. We declare again, God, our love of you and our desire to walk through this life with you in the center. In Jesus' name.